Hello everyone. Today we're going to learn about Python virtual environments specifically on a Windows 10 machine. So what are we covering? Well, first we're going to take a step back and understand what a virtual environment is and why it matters. Then we're going to log into our Windows machine and create operate and remove in, in a virtual environment. Essentially, we're going to cover all the commands that you need to know as a new programmer to manage and maintain your virtual environment. So what is a virtual environment? Well, virtual environments enable you to manage multiple programs with different dependencies. You know, Python includes this thing called pip, which allows you to install and manage dependencies that are not part of the standard library. Now, a dependency is any library or software that our program depends on, right? That's where it gets the word dependency depends on that are not part of the standard library. And that really, if it was part of the standard library, we wouldn't need to download it because we already have it. But let's create, you know, give it a, make this more concrete. Let's say we're creating a project and we need to use the pandas library. The pandas library is one of my favorite data science libraries. Um, but all we need to do to install pandas is type pip space install space pandas. And that'll install pandas into our global environment. Now that enables all of the programs that we write to access this pandas library. So we can use those pan, you know, pandas tools. Well, that's, you're saying, well, that's great, Leo, right? Well, it introduces a, a pretty immense problem. <laughs> See what I did there? Um, what happens if you have two projects that use different versions of the same software? So let's say we download you know, pip install pandas, but this time we specify a different version. Well, that might break our original project, right? So the good news is, you know, virtual environments solve this challenge. You know, virtual environments or virtual M's for short, create an environment that's isolated or encapsulated. Well, encapsulated is just the fancy programmer term for saying it's a container, right? It's contained and isolated. So we, all we install is ex only the exact software with the appropriate version in each, for, in each virtual environment for each project. So each project has its own little bubble where it has everything that it needs. That's what a virtual environment does. And we can, you know, if we have 100 projects, we'd have 100 different virtual environments. Right. And that's, you know, now and we have confidence that all of our projects will run with the appropriate dependencies. And the great news is, as of Python version 3.3, there's nothing additional we need to do because virtual environments are built into the standard library. So before we uh, log into our Windows machine, here are the commands that we're going to be covering today. Feel free to take a screenshot of this or just feel free to you know follow along as uh, I work through the commands on the Windows machine. Okay, now that we're logged into our Windows machine, the first thing we're going to want to do is check to see if Python is installed. We can do this by typing python dash dash version. And if you re receive a version number, not an error, Python is indeed installed. So if you don't have Python installed, feel free to watch my previous video. I'll link it on how to install Python on the Windows 10 machine. So with Python installed, to create a virtual environment, we simply type Python dash M for module, VENV for virtual environment, and then we can name our virtual environment anything with, that we want. We could say Leo's VENV, right? Uh, that's a good name, but a better name is actually VENV. So why is VENV a better name? Well, it's conventional for virtual environments to be named VENV. So we'll have our project folder, and then within our project folder, we have our virtual environment, you know, uh, name VENV. And that's, you know, if we had 50 project folders, they'd all be named VENV. Okay, we can type DIR now when we see that our virtual environment is indeed, you know, a folder within our project folder. Now, we're not using our virtual environment yet. The first thing that we need to do is activate our virtual environment. And we do that by typing VENV backslash scripts backslash activate dot bat. Now, when we hit enter, we'll notice that the VENV is prepended to our path. This allows us, or it's a visual indicator, letting us know that our virtual environment is active. Now we can type all of our standard commands like pip list to see what are the packages that are in our virtual environment. So right now, we just have the scaffolding packages, or the packages that come with every virtual environment, pip and setup tools. And now let's install our... Uh, you know, that 
uh, data science library we discussed previously, pandas. So pip install pandas. And this will install pandas, numpy, and everything. You know, that pandas, you know, all the dependencies for pandas. So that way we can use pandas, you know, for any of our prod, uh, for our project. Okay. And you'll notice when I type dir, there's nothing different, right? Everything about within everything is contained within the venv folder now that's something i want to bring up so virtual environments are made to be disposable right you should never put any of your project files into a virtual environment folder because we don't save virtual environments to our repository right so obviously you know whenever we're coding we're saving our files to you know github or gitlab or you know any version control of your choice um, we don't want to commit this stuff to version control because they can get pretty big. I mean, you know, we can install hundreds, if not thousands of packages over time. There's no reason to, you know, save, you know, that information. All we really need to know are the packages or the dependencies and their version numbers, right? And with the packages and version numbers, we can recreate the virtual environment. So that's exactly what we're going to do now. So we can type pip freeze. And then we pipe that to requirements.txt and hit enter. We type more requirements.txt. And you'll notice now we have the exact versions of the dependent and uh, the dependencies with their exact versions listed in this requirement.txt file. Now this is the file that we would save to our you know uh, repository. And then if we, you know, move to a different computer or one of our colleagues needs to recreate this environment, they can do so from the requirements um, bad file. So let's do let's actually do that. So we'll type deactivate to deactivate our virtual environment because if we delete the virtual environment and then we try to run pandas or Python uh, commands, we're going to be trying to run Python from a virtual environment that's deleted and we'll get a bunch of errors. So we'll type deactivate. Okay, we can see that now we have our requirements text file and our virtual environment. We can remove directory and then we'll venv, front slash slash venv. We'll say yes and then dir. So now our virtual environment no longer exists. Now clear that screen to make things a little bit easier to read. Now, how do we recreate our virtual environment? Simple. We type Python dash M V E N V. So we're using the virtual environment module V E N V. We'll name it V E N V again. Right. And now after the V E N V is created, we'll have to activate it because if we don't, then we just, we'd end up installing all of, you know, we'll set up installing pandas into our global environment, which is not what we want to do. So we type V E N V backslash scripts backslash activate dot that. Again, now it lets us know that we're in our virtual environment and at our global environment. Now we do pip install dash r requirements.txt. And we'll hit enter. And you'll notice we're pulling the exact same packages uh, that were installed previously. So we've now successfully recreated our virtual environment. And we can do pip list and notice that all of our packages are indeed uh, indeed there now. So that's it. So this is these are the the essential commands that you need to know when you know managing a virtual environment. You need to know how to create one, you need to know how to activate it, you need to know how to export out the you know the dependencies with their versions using pip freeze, and then you need to know how to deactivate it. And that's pretty much it. There are other commands, but Again, 99% of the time as a new program, this is exactly what you need to, need to know. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and I wish you the best of luck on your Python programming journey. Thanks everyone.